Hello my dear subscribers, I'm pleased to welcome you to my YouTube channel dedicated to author stories. Enjoy listening. Diana was walking home from work, enjoying the clean cool air that always follows the rain. It was already dark and streetlights were glowing everywhere. She was approaching a bridge, just a little while longer and she'd be home. Home, what a wonderful word. It's especially nice to know that your loved one is waiting for you there, eagerly anticipating your arrival. She knows that if she doesn't show up in the next five minutes, he'll start calling and asking where she is and if everything's okay. On the bridge, she saw a girl holding onto the railings and looking down. She was about to walk past, but something inside her stopped her. And she remembered how a year ago she herself stood on that bridge, her shoulders trembling just like this girl's. In that moment, she wanted to do the scariest thing because she couldn't see the point of life. Looking at the girl again, she decided to approach her. Standing beside her, she looked at the tearful, pretty girl and said, You don't need to do this. You can't stop living just because you think you're not loved or betrayed. What do you know? And anyway, go away from here, don't disturb me. And if you don't leave, I'll go somewhere else. Listen, can you relax a bit and listen to me? I won't try to talk you out of what you want to do, alright? Let's go, sit on the bench, and I'll tell you something. And if after my story you still don't change your mind, then it's your business and your decision. The girl took her frozen fingers off the railing and turned to Diana. They walked down from the bridge and went to a bench that happened to be near the entrance to Diana's building. Just as she thought, her phone rang. She picked up the receiver and heard Christopher's worried voice, asking where she was and if everything was okay. I'm by the entrance on the bench, don't worry. But I have a request for you, please bring out a blanket and prepare some coffee in a thermos for us. We'll need it. Us? Honey, maybe it would be better if you come up to our place. It's damp and cold outside, I don't want you to catch a cold. Trust me, dear, this way is better. Just bring two blankets then, okay? Do you not need my help? No, I can handle it myself. The girl listened to Diana's conversation, then couldn't hold back and cried again. At that moment, Christopher came out of the building carrying two fluffy blankets and a thermos. He wrapped Diana first and then put a blanket around the shivering girl, who immediately snuggled into it. He took two small cups from his jacket pocket and poured coffee for them. Well, I'll go then, I won't disturb you, he said and went home. Drink the coffee while it's hot, it'll warm you up faster. The girl took the cup with trembling hands and took a sip. What's your name? Linda, and yours? I'm Diana. So, Linda, I want to tell you the story of my life now. I understand that right now it seems to you that I don't understand anything about life, that everything is fine with me, and I'm trying to teach someone. No, a year ago everything was different for me, life was going downhill, and with each passing day, I wanted to live less and less. Diana fell silent, taking a sip of coffee. The girl couldn't hold back any longer. And what happened to you? I graduated from college with honors, a job, a career, and a wedding were waiting for me. I always prioritized things. It made life easier for me. My boyfriend wasn't happy that my wedding was on the third place of my priorities. He believed that we should get married first, and then everything else. And I gave in to his persuasions. Now I realize that you shouldn't compromise your life principles. Probably, life could have been different. But at that moment, I decided to do what he wanted. We had the wedding, and I moved into his one-bedroom apartment. At first, everything was fine. I worked, I had a good salary. Plus, like I said, I had goals. 
By then, there were already two. The first one was to build a career, and the second one was to buy a bigger apartment. I didn't like living in my husband's apartment. I kept telling him that I wanted something big, spacious, and cozy. My friend Karen always told me that with the persistence I had, I would achieve everything quickly. You're strange, Diana. So you'll achieve what you want, and then what? What do you mean? I don't understand. What are you talking about? You're just rushing to live. Why? I mean, knowing you, I understand that you live for your goals. But what will you do when you achieve them? Right. Life isn't just about work and an apartment. There's so much more to strive for. Look at you. You seem content. You don't do anything. You don't even bother to get married. You've even stopped taking care of yourself, and that's not right. A woman should always look her best. So, let's do this. Starting tomorrow, we'll find you a husband. Are you saying you'll help me with that? Of course, I will. I don't want my best friend to end up an old maid. From that very day, Diana began giving Karen advice on how to dress, how to talk, and how to behave in certain situations. And, most importantly, remember, men shouldn't see any interest in them in your eyes. If they sense that, they'll lose interest in you. But do I actually show that interest in my eyes? Karen, it's not just in your eyes, it's like a flashing neon sign on your forehead that says, I want to get married. That's why they run away from you like they're scalded. Every day, Diana would come home with bags full of groceries. She always believed that household abundance was having a full refrigerator. Victor never helped her with this. He always told her that shopping and carrying bags were a woman's job, and a man's job was to earn money. Diana didn't mind this much. After all, it's in a woman's nature to run errands, shop for groceries, and lament that she only has two hands instead of four or more. When she came home from work in the evening, she would prepare a delicious dinner for her husband and even try to prepare something for his lunch the next day so he could take it to work. After dinner, she would clean the dishes, tidy up the kitchen, gather the dirty laundry, and throw it in the washing machine. It all suited her. She believed that this was what a family was like because her mother lived in the same way and taught her daughter to do the same. Listen, the guys at my workplace are amazed. I bring a full lunch and dinner every day, while their wives only make them a soup and that's it. You know, it would be fine if they made a different soup every day. But no, they cook a huge pot of all sorts of stuff, and the guys spend a week struggling to eat it. And they look at me with envious eyes. Well, maybe the women are busy. Maybe they work late. There could be plenty of reasons why they do that. No, there are no reasons. A woman must look after her husband. You work too, and yet everything is available and ready in our home. If your head didn't hurt so often, you'd be the perfect wife. So, because of my headaches, I'm not an ideal wife? Yes, you fall short. Diana wasn't offended by her husband. She was occupied with her job, saving money for an apartment, and thought that by the end of the year, they would definitely move into a new house. One day, Victor came home from work very angry and irritated. I've had enough. I don't want to work there anymore. What happened, dear? Calm down and tell me what happened. As if working at the factory like crazy wasn't enough, now they're saying that we have to clean our workspaces every evening. Not only that, but we also have to clean the entire workshop. Apparently, due to staff cuts, there aren't enough people to clean up. So, I told them I won't do it. I didn't go to college to work as a janitor. Victor, there's really nothing wrong with that. You won't be cleaning the whole workshop by yourself. There are a lot of people working there. 
I mean, each person cleans their own workspace, and collectively, the workshop is clean. What's the problem? No, I said I won't do it, so I won't. All right, here's what I've come up with. I'm tired of working for someone else. I've decided to start my own business. You know how good I am with cars, so I'm going to open my own auto repair shop. What do you think? Victor, to start something, you need money. Do you have any? Of course, I do. They're in an envelope in the closet under the sheets. Sweetheart, you know very well that I'm saving up for our apartment. So, don't touch that money. What are you talking about? I said I'm going to have an auto repair shop, so I will. I don't care what you say. Since we live together, everything we have is shared. The money you're saving is also shared, and I can use it whenever I want. And by the way, what's wrong with my apartment? Or are you afraid that I'll kick you out? Diana looked at her husband and wondered how he had changed. What was happening to him, and why was he treating her this way? No, Victor, I'm not afraid. But I do think that sooner or later, we'll have children, and it will be too cramped in one room for all of us. It's too early to think about children. So, you won't have time to save up for an apartment, and in the meantime, I'll open my auto repair shop. Victor indeed left his job, and with Diana's money, rented a space and carried out his plan. At first, things didn't go well, but gradually people started to hear about it, and soon he needed an assistant. He hired a young guy from the neighborhood who had just graduated from college, and his business started to thrive. Diana continued to work and in the evenings, she would lug home heavy bags, thinking that her evening would be just like yesterday, the day before, and a year ago. She started to realize that her life had somehow come to a standstill, reached a dead end. The routine was getting to her. She felt that something was off, but couldn't figure out what needed to change. Meanwhile, her friend lost her job. She made a serious mistake in her report, and their office management doesn't forgive such things. She got fired. In the evening, the tearful friend came to Diana's house, not knowing what to do next. Victor was sitting with them in the kitchen, looking at Karen who, while crying, explained that she had been looking for a job all day but couldn't find one. Karen, well, why are you crying? I actually need an accountant, reports calculations, taxes. I can't keep up, and Diana is already busy. So, come work with me. And a woman's touch won't hurt, tidying up, putting flowers in pots. What do you say? And indeed, Karen, agree. Victor has been pestering me about these reports for a while, and you know how busy I am at work. A week passed since Karen started working for Victor. Diana began to notice that her husband was staying late at work. He would tell her that he had a lot to do, though this wasn't the case before. Another week went by, and he started demanding that she cook more for him. And when she packed his food in a bag, he insisted on adding napkins. Well, napkins make sense. But why put more food? Haven't the portions I've been giving you every day been enough? Well, now there's two of us. After all, we have a lady with us now. She really likes the way you cook. She's quite busy with work, you know. Wait, so where am I? Am I just lazing around the house all day? You two have settled in just fine. You're all working, and I'm supposed to cater to you too. Diana couldn't hold back. Don't raise your voice at me. There's nothing wrong with just putting a bit more. We're all loving and gentle, you see. You won't break a sweat, and if you keep getting worked up like this, no one's keeping you here. Pack your things and go wherever you want. Diana was shocked by her husband's outburst. He had never kicked her out before. She went into the room, 
pulled out the envelope where she usually kept the money. According to her calculations, there should have still been money inside, but the envelope was empty. I needed the money for car parts, so I took it. Why didn't you tell me anything? What? Do I have to report to you? Those are my things, you know? If this is my house, then the money in that envelope is mine. Give it back to me, or else I'll leave this house. Got it. Dien, why are you getting so worked up? I was just kidding. Yes, sorry for not telling you about taking the rest of the money. Sorry, my bad. And with Karen, I was just kidding. Let her cook for herself. I don't know what's gotten into me today. Must have been a tough day. Looks like you had a tough day too. Is something going on at work? I'm just tired, Victor. It's the same thing every day. Maybe we could go somewhere. To a restaurant, for instance. It won't work. Restaurants require money, and as you can see, we don't have any right now. After that outburst from Diana, Victor started paying more attention to his wife. Diana thought that it was probably just nerves. After all, her job was draining all her energy, and now she was starting to crack. Karen watched Victor work and caught herself thinking that it wouldn't be a bad idea to marry this man herself. Why not? He has his own business, he's handsome, hardworking. What else do you need? Diana will find someone else, and I'll take this one for myself, she thought. After planning her moves, Karen started acting. She would come to work in tight dresses, making sure to wear stockings underneath. When sitting in front of Victor, she would position herself so that the lace trim of her stockings was visible. She saw his interested looks, but she didn't rush things. She felt like a fisherman. Karen could see that the fish had taken the bait and was ready to bite, and if she jerked the line too soon, the fish would swim away. And she didn't want that. Lately, things weren't going well for Diana at work. There was a lot of work, but she couldn't manage it. Her already somber mood had dropped to zero lately. She felt trapped in a cycle with no way out. Her boss, Mr. Johnson, called her in for a conversation. Diana, I want to talk to you about something. I can see that you're tired. You used to handle all tasks perfectly fine, but now things are different. But I understand, you need a vacation. Don't worry, we'll take care of all your work, and you take a break. Not a whole month, of course, but I'll give you two weeks. Three days, Diana said, realizing that would be enough for her. Why? Don't you want to go somewhere? Mr. Johnson, you see, I just don't have the money to go anywhere right now. Don't you and your husband work? He does. He has his own auto repair shop. Then I really don't understand why you don't have money. You didn't plan any big purchases as far as I know, so where did it all go? You don't have dependents, and your salary is excellent. And your husband, most likely, makes good money too. So, what's the matter? I don't know myself. I'm just tired of everything. Give me three days, and I'll be back to normal. Diana decided not to do anything for three days. On the first day, she slept well, then prepared a simple dinner, took a short walk, and went to bed again. The next day, she woke up early, got dressed, and went for a walk in the park. She wanted to sit on a bench, watch people, trees. Just watch, because everything had been passing her by. She had been living in the office, then at home, and back to the office. Victor didn't say anything to his wife, didn't ask anything. She was grateful for that. On the third day, she tidied up the house, cooked dinner, and then decided to freshen up herself because she realized how much she missed her husband's attention. Victor looked surprised as Diana greeted him at the door when he returned from work. 
He noticed that she looked well-rested and happier. Well, Diana, is the vacation over? Back to the battle tomorrow? Victor joked while pouring wine into glasses. Yes, I rested. Apparently, I needed that. By the way, tell me, how's work going for you? How is Karen handling her responsibilities? She hasn't even called me lately, and I don't know how she's doing. Everything's good, she's managing, Victor answered in a reserved tone and took a sip of wine. Okay, but tell her to call me in the evening. I want to ask her something. And what do you want to ask her if it's not a secret? No secret. I just want to know if she found someone or not. Last time she told me she had someone in mind. So, I want to find out if it worked out or not. Victor silently started eating dinner while Diana looked thoughtfully at him. It's interesting, so many years together, but there's not much to talk about. And he's been acting strangely lately. He used to talk about his work, but now he's silent. Victor, don't you want to take a couple of days off? Maybe we could go somewhere. You know, it turns out it's really nice to just relax like that. It's great to relax when you have money, but right now we don't. By the way, I wanted to ask you about that. Is it true that there's no money? We're living on my salary. You've been working for six months, but I haven't seen a penny. Well, I explained it to you. I have significant expenses to work properly. I need tools. That's why I'm buying them. I see. And for how much longer are you going to be buying them? Well, I think I've got everything I need now. I'm planning to start bringing some money home. Diana was starting to doubt that, but she didn't say anything out loud. After she and her husband made love, he turned away and started snoring, while Diana lay there with her eyes closed, realizing that something was really wrong with her. If before she enjoyed intimacy, now it was different. She didn't feel anything. The next morning, as they were getting ready for work, Victor asked her if she had a good time yesterday. Diana simply nodded but didn't say anything. Well, you enjoyed yourself, but I, for example, didn't. It felt like there was a log beneath me. In short, I didn't like it. Look, if it continues like this, I might as well get a mistress. Diana was walking to work, pondering her husband's words. Something was wrong with her again. Once again, she felt to blame, though she longed for affection. She had eagerly prepared that romantic dinner, hoping her husband would relax after work and pay attention to her. She sighed in disappointment, thinking, and as always, it's my fault in everything. Karen decided not to procrastinate any longer and, as they say, strike while the iron is hot. She saw that Victor looked at her with a loving gaze and realized she had caught his interest. Still, Diana did well. She gave me useful advice, and I'm putting it to use. While you're working and making plans, your hubby is falling in love with me and will be mine. She wasn't bothered at all by the fact that Victor was her close friend's husband. After all, as they say, all's fair in love and war. If she couldn't keep her own husband, she'd take what she wanted and be happy, and Diana would find someone else for herself. Victor, here's the report I've prepared. Everything's ready. You know, I'd like to take the day off. It's my birthday today. I want to go buy myself a present and maybe prepare something for dinner in case someone drops by to congratulate me. Why do you need someone else? You have me. I'll definitely come. I'll even close up work a bit earlier, so go, set the table, I'll be coming to congratulate you soon. Will you come alone or with Diana? Why do we need her? She'll just irritate us. Of course, alone. I think we have things to talk about. Diana looked at the calendar on her desk and, seeing the date, grabbed her phone. 
Karen, hey. Happy birthday. I wish you all the best, and most importantly, happiness in your personal life. What are your plans for the evening? Maybe we can meet up, chat. It's been so long since we've seen each other, I've even started to miss you. Thanks, Diana, for the wishes. You know, today won't work for me. I actually have a meeting today, a man is coming over. I'm happy for you. Who is he? How long have you been seeing each other? Listen, I'm really busy right now. Let's talk later, I'll tell you everything. Okay. Bye for now then. Call me. Karen set the table, put on her favorite evening dress, and waited for Victor. He soon arrived with a beautiful bouquet of roses. They sat down to dine and talk. You know, I've just realized now that I don't love Diana at all. I married her on a whim. Now, I'm living in suffering. I realized this only when I got to know you better. You're so carefree, joyful, and happy. It's pleasant to talk to you and spend time with you. But with Diana, it's not the same. It's always about money, work, and even in bed, she's not interesting. Victor, let's not talk about her now, okay? Let's talk about us. I feel really good with you too. When I see you, I immediately feel happy and at ease because I know I'm with a real man. Look at you, saying such things, while Diana can't. She's always focused on herself, and she won't lower her pride to compliment me in any way. She won't acknowledge what a good husband I am. Karen was getting annoyed by Victor's complaints, but she didn't show it and continued. Victor, you just need a different woman, someone who would value, respect, and understand you. And since she's not that woman, you're walking around irritated and dissatisfied with life. Yeah, you're completely right about that. Living with Diana is like a punishment. I'm tired. I can't keep going on like this. Yes, I understand you. She's difficult to handle. Even I sometimes wish I could send her far away with her attitude and lectures. She somehow believes she should tell everyone how to live. Just recently, she asked me why I'm still single. Why haven't I married? Well, it's because I want a real man beside me, someone I'd love and value, not just someone I'd marry for show. And then live and suffer. You're such a wise woman. Karen, my wife should learn from you. But of course, her pride won't allow that. They could have continued talking for a while, but Karen sensed her patience was wearing thin. She decided to take matters into her own hands. That evening, Victor stayed with her. Diana, as usual, set the table and waited for her husband. Time passed, the dinner grew cold, but Victor was nowhere to be found. She called him, but he didn't answer. Assuming he was very busy, she got to work on the reports as she needed to meet the deadline. She didn't realize how time flew by. It was three in the morning on the clock, and Victor still hadn't returned. She was about to go to bed when she heard the slam of the front door. Victor entered the room and said, I was with your friend. She's amazing in bed, unlike you. He turned and collapsed onto the bed. A minute later, he was asleep while Diana stood in the middle of the room, staring at a fixed point. Karen. How could she? She went into the bathroom, splashed her face with cold water, and looked at herself in the mirror. Yes, she had aged during this time. It was difficult for her to maintain this household. She couldn't handle it. No money, no goals, her husband sleeping with her friend and even praising her. She realized her strength had run out, that she no longer wanted anything, not even to live. She left the bathroom, sat at the table, took out a sheet of paper, and wrote, I'm glad you enjoyed sleeping with Karen. I wish you happiness, 
I won't interfere with you because I've realized I no longer want to live. Goodbye. She left the apartment and walked aimlessly. The city was asleep, very quiet, with only traffic lights flashing orange. She saw a bridge and turned towards it. Holding onto the railing, she looked up at the sky, seeking forgiveness, not knowing from whom. After all, she was to blame for everything. She had destroyed it all, she couldn't make it, she didn't achieve anything. That meant she shouldn't take someone else's place. She just needed to let go and it would all end. Victor woke up, looked around the room, then at the clock, and jumped up. Diana, are you crazy or what? Why didn't you wake me up? No one answered him. What a bitch. Didn't wake me up. Well, never mind, I'll deal with you in the evening, he said out loud. He was about to leave when he saw a note on the table. When he read it, he felt scared. He started dialing his wife's number, but she was out of network coverage. So, he called Karen. Listen, Diana found out everything and left last night. She wrote a note saying she doesn't want to live. What do I do now? Yeah, nothing. I know Diana, she wouldn't do such a thing. She's a strong person, she's just manipulating you. So, don't worry. Most likely, she wants you to chase after her. But don't even think about it, you'll see that in a few days, she'll come back on her own. After all, she has nowhere to go. And by the way, get back to work, I miss you. Victor calmed down, realizing that Karen was probably right and nothing terrible had happened. Karen thought that Diana would do everything to get Victor back, but she wouldn't miss her chance either. She decided to strike while the iron was hot. When Victor came to work, she said, Darling, since your wife already knows everything, how about I move in with you? After last night, I realized that you're the most reliable man and that I'll only be happy with you. What do you say? Are you in? Victor didn't expect such forwardness from Karen. In reality, he didn't want to live with her. He was content with both Diana and her. But remembering what Diana had written in the note, he decided to be spiteful. To prove that she wasn't the only woman on earth and that he wouldn't chase anyone. I'm in. As they say, the more, the merrier. Three days went by. There was no word from Diana. Victor started getting worried, but Karen told him to be patient and wait a little longer. Annoyed, he listened to her, while all he could think about was his wife returning soon. He didn't like that his apartment was now a mess, with Karen's belongings strewn all over the room. She hadn't cooked dinner, saying that, like him, she was tired from work and it would be easier to order something. In the morning, when he decided to put on clean trousers, they were missing. They were in the laundry basket. He habitually put them there, knowing that his wife would wash everything. Can't you even do laundry? And can't you just press a button and that's it? Are you a little child or something? Tell me, should I change your diapers since you can't use the toilet on your own? But Diana always... Your Diana spoiled you. Just remember, I'm not your servant. I work just as much as you do. I get tired too, and I'm not going to serve you. Victor got angry and, to avoid saying anything rude, he went to the kitchen. He decided to have breakfast, but when he opened the fridge, he saw that it was empty. This had never happened in their home before. It was always filled to the brim. Well, couldn't you go to the store? He snapped and stormed back into the room. Or do you think I should do that too? Of course, I can't carry heavy bags. I'm still pregnant, so let's go to the store tonight. I'll buy groceries, and you can carry them. It's not a man's job to go shopping. Women should do that. Fine, then go hungry. I don't care. 
Victor was getting irritated by Karen. He realized she wasn't interesting to him. He didn't want to go home and eagerly awaited Diana's return. A week passed, and she was still missing. He thought that if she didn't show up in a couple of days, he'd definitely go to the police and file a missing person report. Coming home from work one evening, he entered with a heavy heart. Karen was lying on the couch, watching TV. She hadn't been to work for three days, saying she wasn't feeling well. There was a pile of dirty dishes in the kitchen, and the pots were empty. There was nothing to eat, and he decided not to order anything tonight because such food gave him stomachache and heartburn. He drank a glass of water and remembered the time when Diana cooked so deliciously for him. She always had both the appetizer and the main course. He was leaving the kitchen when he heard the key turning in the door. He sighed with relief, realizing it was Diana. But naturally, he immediately composed himself, putting on a stern face to show her that he was very angry. Diana entered the apartment, looked at her husband standing in the hallway, smiled, and calmly said, Hi, I'm here for my things. I think you don't need them. Victor's breath caught. Firstly, Diana surprised him. She looked so radiant, as if she was glowing from within. And secondly, he realized she wasn't going to give up. She just wanted to collect her things. Karen burst out of the room and asked sarcastically, Need any help? I don't have anywhere to put my stuff. Well, we were waiting for you to finally get rid of your stuff. Karen, shut up. Hold on, I don't understand. Where are you going? Victor growled, then turned to Diana and asked the same. The fridge is empty, laundry isn't done, the house is a mess, the floors are dirty. You're going to pack up your things? Victor, are you not mixing things up? You have a landlady in the house, it seems. Tell all this to her. Or do you want me to serve you both and live together? Victor was speechless, realizing Diana was, as always, right. She calmly went to the room, got a big bag, and started packing her things. Karen jumped out of the room and spitefully asked, Need help? Nowhere to put my things? Well, we were waiting for you to finally free up space for your clothes. Oh, yes, with pleasure. Karen irritated Diana. She could see that Diana wasn't devastated, looked great, and even wore expensive clothes, which made her a bit envious. When she lived with Victor, she never dressed like that. Victor watched silently and didn't know what to say. He realized the mistake he had made. He shouldn't have invited Karen to live with him. Now, of course, Diana could calmly leave because she saw that his mistress now lived with him. Yes, what a mistress, he thought with annoyance. She's so annoying. I didn't realize what I got into, and now I don't know how to get rid of her. Only now did it dawn on him what kind of woman he had lost. After all, Diana did everything for him, and the fact that she became this way was only his fault. He took everything for granted, not giving her anything in return. Diana, wait, don't be hasty. We've spent so many years together. Are you really going to just abandon everything and leave like this? Let's talk calmly. And let Karen pack her things instead of you. I don't need her. I wanted to do everything just to spite you. Now I see how wrong I was. So, what? I'm not needed. Weren't you recently confessing your love to me? Or are you going to say that you did everything just to annoy Diana? Yes, just be quiet. I don't love you, got it? Because you're worthless in every way, in household matters and in bed. Victor shouted. So, that's how it is, huh? Fine. Let me tell you this, I'm pregnant and we'll soon have a child. So, whether you want it or not, you'll have to live with me. Then she turned to Diana and added, 
and you need to find another husband because you missed out on your own. Don't worry, I don't need to look for anyone. I've already found someone, Diana said, closing her bag and heading towards the exit. Victor rushed after her and grabbed her arm. You're not going anywhere. I didn't let you go. But then the door opened and a very attractive man walked into the hallway. He took Diana's bag, then grabbed Victor's hand and twisted it. Don't you dare touch her. You lack the wisdom to keep such a woman by your side, even though you chose what truly suits you. So now, live with her. After saying this, he took Diana by the arm, and they left. Karen broke the silence. She really got herself a man. And a handsome one, you can see he has money. Unlike you, loser. Diana fell silent and turned to Linda, who had been listening to her story. Well, that's it. You know, I've realized one thing. No person is worth giving up your life for. Believe me, we have everything ahead of us. Life is beautiful, and you'll understand that tomorrow. Why tomorrow? Because the sun will rise, a new day will begin, and you'll want to keep living. In fact, it's quite possible that tomorrow you'll meet someone who will love you just the way you are. Diana, you didn't tell me what Christopher said to you on the bridge. How did he convince you not to do it? He told me the same thing I'm telling you now. He just reminded me of the new day that would be very good for me. Linda sighed. The life story Diana had told her had left a strong impression. And she understood that arguing with her boyfriend wasn't worth what she had been planning to do. Thank you. If it weren't for you, I would have done something terribly foolish. I'm going home. I'll get ready for tomorrow because I believe what you said. Tomorrow will be a good day for me.